going to New Zealanders. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I call the Honourable Member Dennis O'Rourke. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, this is yet another case of the government failing in its most basic duty to protect the rights of ordinary New Zealanders. If the government collects, as it has in this case, important and personal information and records that information, then it clearly has a duty of care to make sure that that information remains confidential. That is the basic function which has been breached in this case. And, Mr Speaker, there can this time be no excuses. There have been far too many occasions within government agencies when breaches of privacy have occurred in just this first year of this term of this government. First of all, we had the ACC, we had the IRD, we had WINS, and now we have this. When is it going to stop? It cannot be allowed to go on and on and on. WINS, in this case, has breached the public trust. And it is not something that the public of New Zealand should go, let go past without protest. It is totally unacceptable. And, Mr Speaker, I listened to the Minister and her apology, and I listened to her explanation today. And I heard terms such as some individual files were not breached, but one was. Well, what has that got to do with anything? It doesn't matter how many files are breached, and it doesn't matter what information was obtained which shouldn't have been obtained. It is not good enough whether it's a lot or a few. And, Mr Speaker, I heard that only a high level of personal information was accessed, quote, unquote. And that, of course, really doesn't matter either, because it is perfectly clear that important personal information was available through the department's own facilities. I also heard, Mr Speaker, the Minister talk about being, quote, disappointed in the performance of the, of the department concerning these breaches of privacy being, quote, not acceptable. But what we really didn't hear from the Minister was whether she was taking any personal responsibility for this and whether she was actually going to make sure that nothing of this kind would happen in the future. And quite frankly, Mr Speaker, from what I heard from the Minister, was a totally inadequate response to such a serious issue. Mr Speaker, the flaws in the Department's kiosk system should have been identified by any number of in-house or external reviews. Now, I'm making the assumption that in this department, like other departments, there are robust in-house reviews and there is a robust system of auditing as to the performance of privacy uh, provisions within departments. I didn't hear from the Minister any words about that, and I would like to know, and I'm sure the public would like to know too. In fact, we do know that in April last year, the Ministry of Social Development paid for a report by Dimension Data, and they actually did expose a number of flaws in the system. Why didn't the Minister talk about that? Why didn't the Minister say what those flaws were? Why didn't the Minister explain what has been done about those flaws? Or, Mr Speaker, is she just not interested? And quite frankly, that's the impression I get, not just from this minister, but from this government as a whole. They seem to be deeply and comprehensively disinterested in the protection of the privacy of individuals in this country in respect of their personal information. So nothing has happened whatsoever about uh, that particular review. And so we are left in this case with yet another example of a government agency clearly inadequately staffed and inadequate, inadequately funded, where these high up, where those high up in the hierarchy are merely going through the motions and ticking boxes, and they're not in fact making sure 
that the privacy of people uh, is genuinely protected. New Zealanders deserve a lot better than that. And under this government, we have, of course, seen a whole litany of these kinds of um, omissions. And first amongst them was the ACC, and we had eventually the resignation of a minister. We've had breaches of privacy in the Inland Revenue Department, and now win wins. And you have to ask, where's it all going? What's going to happen next? What will be the breach of privacy in what department or what agency next month? It cannot be allowed to happen, and the only way that this Parliament can make sure it doesn't is to hold ministers accountable. That, in fact, is what they are there to do. They are responsible to this Parliament. And what I've heard from this minister is just this, that she doesn't think this is so serious that she shouldn't have done a lot more about it. And as a result, Mr Speaker, we have a comprehensive uh, lack of trust in this government by the public generally. And when you heard the debate earlier today, and during question time, and some of the things stated by the Prime Minister, you would have to ask yourself, as an ordinary New Zealander, whether you could have trust in him as the Prime Minister of this country. When you think about the performance of Mr John Banks in this House, concerning the issues that have concerned him in recent times, as an ordinary New Zealander, you would have to ask, basically, could you really have trust in that particular minister? I don't think many New Zealanders would be prepared to answer in respect of either of those cases that they have full trust in those ministers. As I've already said, we've already had a resignation from one minister, Mr Nick Smith, and that came back to trust as well, trust to do things properly and in accordance with correct procedures. So what we have, uh, Mr Speaker, with this government is a culture of mistrust and there is a disconnect between the trustworthiness of this government and what the expectations of the people in this country are or should be. And I have a num number of questions to ask as a result of all this. First of all, the most obvious question of them all, where is the ministerial responsibility? Where is the accountability? This sort of thing has happened far too often, far too many departments, and the government just glosses over it. Well, it is time for this minister to stand up and be counted. It is time for this minister to resign. It is time for her to go. This issue is that important, and it cannot be allowed to go past. She should now really consider her situation. And why has she not demanded the resignation of her chief executive? Because that should also be called for. In the end, somebody has to take responsibility. It is not good enough for this to be glossed over once again. And why does nobody in this government ever take responsibility for anything? It's always smile and spin your way out of these situations. It's never let's take responsibility. And this is the way it should be. That is what the expectation of this House must be for that Minister to resign. Mr. Speaker. Louise Upston. Mr. Speaker, uh, I am somewhat.